periodontal risk assessment just the way we discussed earlier the caries risk assessment uh, this is a time to talk about periodontal risk and we have to evaluate uh, the factors that are present in a patient that could pose as a risk for periodontitis one more thing to consider is that a risk factor should satisfy at least two uh, criterias and one of them is that it is uh, possible for the factor that is present to cause that periodontal effect or the periodontal disease and that factor should be uh, present before the onset of disease so they can be linked together Just before we talk about the various risk factors that could pose as uh, the cause of the periodontal disease, one has to understand that uh, just because a factor is present does not mean that a disease will going to occur. And similarly, if the factor is absent, does not mean the disease will not occur. And uh, this is important in the context of your NDEC exam. Uh, you are likely to interpret the information that will be provided to you. It could be in the form of radiographs where you have to identify the condition of the teeth, uh, the variety of bone loss that is present, any excess amount of calculus and uh, the tooth loss that is exhibited through those radiographs you will have an idea that how the past periodontal status of that patient has been and that could just give that guideline as uh, where you are going to put that patient in the kind of risk category you are thinking about. To get started with, we can manage risk in two broad categories now before going deeper into detail this is how we can at least try to understand that what kind of risks um, we can generally see in a particular patient and that could be attributed to having some systemic risk factors which involves uh, anything that affects host immune response or we can categorize that into uh, local risk factors um, which means that anything that promotes plaque accumulation which could be uh, overhanging restoration or ledges around the margin uh, that just attract more plaque and calculus or it could be a uh, medical condition like diabetes or some immunodeficiency conditions uh, it could be HIV and uh, these are the situations where systemic uh, conditions do pose uh, risk as the host immune response is altered which means that now the immunity of the body is not going to react against the infiltrants that come out from the deposited plaque and as a result it's not going to combat the deleterious effects of the toxins that are generated from from the plaque there are four levels of risk assessment we can do or perform this risk assessment at four levels at the patient level which is more at the general level and we can uh, assume things as the age of the patient systemic conditions of the patient uh, then we can talk about the whole mouth level which means that we can see if the patient is wearing any dentures or appliances or any retainers that could promote uh, the uh, de deposition of plaque anywhere or which means the maintenance of hygiene becomes difficult in the patient who is undergoing some prosthodontic or orthodontic treatment then we do that risk assessment at the level of tooth and then uh, at the level of uh, sight and we will just discuss that in detail so talking about the risk assessment that can be assessed at the patient level uh, we can look for the family history of tooth loss we can ask question uh, that how the dentition has been uh, about your parents about your grandparents and when was the first time they 
wear their first denture and uh, questions like these will guide you uh, with the proper information that will help you get the assessment of the risk for the person or the patient you are trying to treat. We can talk about the medical history of systemic risk factors about the prevalence of conditions like hypertension, diabetes or any immunodeficiency conditions that could uh, be a part of uh, uh, risk assessment that could pose a threat or increased risk towards periodontitis in such a patient. Then we can ask about their motivation to maintain hygiene. Uh, ask questions as uh, when was the last time they went to a dentist? When was the last time they got their cleaning done or scaling done? And uh, this will just give an idea that how motivated they are. And uh, no doubt there are financial conditions of a patient that could play a role in increasing or decreasing the motivation of a patient. But all we are doing here is is to assess the uh, risk level of the particular patient in developing uh, periodontitis or other periodontal conditions. We can talk about the social history, um, their habits like smoking, etc. And as we know that smoking has a role uh, as it alters the immune response when a person develops the periodontitis and it uh, undoubtedly pu puts them in a high risk category. If they are experiencing or having the habit of bruxism, clenching means that uh, chances are that they are putting those extra forces on the teeth, uh, especially in a person who is not motivated towards maintaining a dental hygiene, these forces extra load uh, will put them in a high risk of category where uh, they can see the deleterious effects uh, very shortly and uh, we can expect to see these conditions developing very soon when in relation to talking about the other patients who are more motivated towards hygiene and who do not carry these parafunctional habits. Now, at the mouth level risk assessment, we will look for the attachment loss relative to age. We know that uh, as the age progresses, we are likely to see more periodontitis. But if we see uh, the level of attachment loss that is usually seen in a 60 year old, and now we are seeing that in a 40 year old or 30 year old, which means that that person is placed in a category that has high risk. Similarly, if uh, their occlusal balance is off and they are uh, putting some extra load on the teeth that have been periodontally affected, they again go into the high risk category. Overall, what is their status of oral hygiene and look for any plaque retentive factors and uh, look for any uh, part of the dentition. Uh, let's say if they have uh, some uh, roughness all around on the tooth surfaces or if they have developed a condition uh, where their dentition is all pitted, which means that they are likely to attract more plaque and calculus on those teeth and these are just part of those retentive factors. If they are wearing any removable prosthesis, it does pose puts them in a high risk category now it becomes really hard to go through the uh, areas of the tooth that are in uh, contact with the retentive clasps and uh, other framework of the denture so they are again needs to be recalled for monitoring on and we are placing them in a moderate to high risk category Levels of recession, gingival inflammation and uh, probing depth will also determine uh, that how likely they are going to develop uh, further aggression of periodontitis as uh, this is just a baseline from where you can place them in a particular risk category. If the levels of recession or gingival inflammation or probing depth seem to decrease 
then you can shift them from a high risk category to a moderate or to low risk category. But this is an area that needs to be evaluated over a period of time. This is all the information that you can find in a scenario that has been presented to you in a NDEC exam or a OSCE exam. And uh, this will guide you to take a specific decision about such a patient. Coming down to the tooth level risk assessment, we have to monitor and evaluate each individual tooth by itself so that we can determine the level of risk. And when we do that, we look for the tooth mobility, uh, grade one to grade three or grade four. Uh, if the tooth is, has drifted in the past, uh, means that it is somewhat periodontally compromised and uh, that will help you put that patient in a high risk category. Look for the radiographic levels of bone support. And uh, if you have been presented with the scenario, you have been given those radiographs about that patient to make a diagnosis and treatment plan. Uh, this is one primary evidence that will help you uh, place a patient in a particular risk level and determine the course of action. What is the presence, location, and extent of furcations? Now look for the furcation involvement. If it is grade one to grade four, uh, will help you determine uh, what level of risk the patient could be in. And uh, if that furcation involvement is in molars, which means that uh, they are likely to get affected soon and uh, tooth loss could be inevitable. Individual tooth anatomy is assessed if a radiograph does suggest that they carry a projection of enamel somewhere around the furcation. It is a, a increased risk factor towards development of periodontitis as now it becomes really hard to clean that area, maintain hygiene and uh, we can likely uh, expect to see more complication arising in that particular affected spot. Look for the anatomy of tooth embrasures and contact points. If there are broad contacts and uh, the embrasures are not anatomically designed, especially when it comes to restorations, uh, that becomes a challenge and it puts the tooth in a risk category where it needs to be monitored or if a restoration needs to be uh, refined uh, as a uh, Inappropriately contoured restorations do have a major role in placing a particular tooth in a high risk category. And that similar thing applies to having ledges or deficiencies in restoration that is going to accumulate more plaque. Occlusal prematurities do uh, put the patient in high risk as now a slight periodontal condition or slight uh, gingival inflammation could progress to periodontitis as uh, these extra load that is that has been placed onto the tooth that has been compromised with their periodontal support even though it's just slight at the beginning uh, will determine how the condition progresses in the future. Site level risk assessment, again, if you are working quadrant wise and in a particular area, uh, bottom right side, lower uh, top left side, so where a bunch of teeth and tissues are involved, uh, you can uh, monitor and evaluate that bunch of area uh, together by looking at the attachment levels, look for the probing pocket depths, uh, having uh, evaluating if the anatomy suggests that it has grooves or concavities, uh, if there is any exudation from pockets, uh, or if there is increased bleeding on probing. All these factors will determine if you want to place that patient in a low to high risk uh, when talking about the risk level of such a patient. I understand that uh, whatever factors we have discussed before, it is slight 
slightly complicated when we are talking about the uh, at the patient level mouth level tooth level or sight level to make things simple uh, this algorithm right here that includes nine factors can be used if you have any difficulty understanding the previous concepts uh, and you think that all the information is already available in a particular question in your OSCE or your NDAC or any, any real life scenario. All this information on this chart can be used to assess the risk level. And uh, we have already talked about all of this stuff as how it's going to pose uh, increased risk. Uh, based upon the information they have provided or we have been provided against these particular bullet points. So think about it, how increased age, in habit of smoking, a uh, person who has been diagnosed with diabetes, a person who has uh, undertaken a perio surgery, uh, who has uh, in progressively increasing pocket depths, who has that sites where furcations have been involved, uh, there have been restoration present below gingival margin that requires correction and uh, there is a radiographic evidence of uh, reduced bone height or angular bone lesions. All these factors are going to place that patient in a high risk category. So this is all about managing the risk or assessing the risk when it comes down to their periodontitis uh, expectations uh, where they can expect to see this condition in the future or not will guide you towards making a right decision uh, about the course of action that you are going to take. So finally, uh, look for all the information uh, that has been provided in your case scenario in your exam look for the information through radiographs, look for the statements that have been given, uh, pay attention to the age of the patient, their habits, uh, if they are wearing any appliances, and uh, what is their medical history. And uh, sometimes these things are easily overlooked because uh, the text associated with the question is too large, too big, for us to pay attention to single details and uh, the focus should be only to find the information uh, that will help you guide towards finding the right answer, uh, assessing and evaluating the risk profile towards periodontitis in such a patient and this is all your goal should be uh, while looking at the information that is given to you.